This is going to be huge. Big roar from the crowd in the background. Brody's got nothing to lose. This is the final race of the season. It's time to put a full stop on the 23 championship in Adelaide. Kostecki owns the title, but this race is anybody's. And it's a huge drag race down at turn one. And Matt Payne has made a blind number starting to get in cleanly to one and will lead the field out the other side. It's Payne from Kostecki, then Mostert, then Waters. A nice clean run for everybody. Up into turn number four, Kostecki dives to the inside. Has a bit of a think about it, but cannot get the job done. Matt's on the ideal race line. They're all nose to tail through five. And they get through. They crashed yesterday in that zone, but they get through safely today. Beautiful start by Matt Payne. Too much wheel spin for Brody. He'll be kicking himself because he got a really good jump and then way too much wheel spin. Excellent start, Matt Payne. Cold tyres out there. And you can see Feeney working the car around the Red Bull car to try and get some temp and pressure up as quick as he can. Turn 8 is treacherous on a cold tyre. Look at Randall coming down the inside. So is Todd Hazelwood. It is over in the dirt. And in fact, there's been a little bit of light contact with Heimgartner down there. Huge amount of congestion as Shane Van Gisbergen tries to get traction out the other side. Turn 11, back to second gear. Uses the island on the inside, up and over the kerb. And Shane is down in 15th position behind Anton Di Pasquale. There's a margin that the first three have got over Cam Waters at the moment. At the end of our first lap, we have got Matt Payne, Brody Kostecki, Chas Most at 1, 2 and 3. So this is building a lot of pressure in this group. Just in behind Shane, you've got Will Davison and Jack LeBrock behind them. And was that Shane up the inside? I think yep. he actually got that pass done. He did, but I don't think it's totally done. Oh, oh, oh. and they run into each other. So the bloke is replacing Van Gisbergen at the Red Bull Airball Racing Team. They make contact in a straight line. And this is not over yet either because Shane's going to fire back to the inside if they come out of eight. And he is, he's down there. He forces his way down there, actually. Have a look at the number of spots now that Will Brown's going to lose. Look at the queue that's forming up behind this little battle here at the moment. So that was spectacular between Van Gisbergen and Brown. That all went sideways by accident yesterday between those two cars. Meantime, we've still got three quarters of a second pain over Kostecki. Down the inside comes Percat. Oh, awkward contact. That's bad. And sends him to the wall. That was LeBrock, I believe. Yes, Jack LeBrock is in the wall now. Is he going to be able to get this thing out? So that was a bit of a trip, clumsy manoeuvre that resulted in ending up on the outside there. He's got reverse, thankfully, and gets it underway. So race control just holding off the button for the moment to get him back going. So he's well up the inside there, Nick Perkett. And then right there, that... That little clumsy tangle where wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact happened again. Now, that's what happened yesterday up at Turn 4 that had catastrophic effect. And similar sort of thing here today, but fortunately, it's a lower speed impact. But with the tyre barrier, Brock's on the toe ball here, isn't he? He's yep. right on the bumper of this thing. So he might have it all, and, and he yep. slid it out there the is. other side. There here comes is. the dive at uh, Turn 6, done nicely. And beautiful work there by, by Brock. So all triggered by too much wheel spin and, and now wheel spin subsequently in a slide was that a little touch yep and if it was does he need to redress yep. and now and look at randall trying to find a way as these two sort it out so most back here in front and is there a little bit more to unpack in all that i didn't fully see it as they were negotiating turn seven i reckon that Chaz probably should have given the throttle a little breather and let Brock back by because Brock's move at turn six was completely fine. But I'm sure there was a little bump on the way into seven, which put Brock right out sideways and almost in the fence. So watch this again. Let's investigate. Here's the move up the inside cleanly. Now here's the response back down to the right hander down at turn seven. There was a touch. You yep. did touch him. So, and he's got the big slide going on. And that's where you called for the idea of the redress to just try and rectify that so that the umpire doesn't have to make the decision for you. So I'd look down only to look back up again to see Brock sliding, missed the little contact. Here's the bumper cam version. This is out of five. Dives down the inside at six. And now here's the corresponding view, listening. Got him. Five second time penalty to car 25 for a driving infringement. What? 
What's that doing pointing in that direction? It's, it's, yeah, I, I have no idea. Oh, he's got hit. Oh, you got to go, okay, the T-bone. Right, now I understand it. That's not a little bit of contact, that's, no. Oh. That's, uh, that's dangerous, isn't it? Pit lane drive through penalty to car 31 for an unsafe release. This is tight, this is tight, and they're going to go all the way up the inside, and Van Gisberg is going to force the issue and forces it hard. Oh, no space on the outside there. Randall comes back at turn five. Good hard racing through there. All drivers giving respect and space. And this doesn't work for Van Gisberg if he gets held here because the short fill strategy, they only put 12 and a half litres in that car. If he hasn't got clear track, it does not work. Uh, I don't think it was a huge amount of fuel went into Tom's car either. So I think it was only 20 odd litres went into his car. So this is wild. Look at Shane's car moving around in turn eight. He now dives down the inside. Thomas tries to cover, but there's not much he can do about it. SVG gets down the inside and so does Will, but he's now side by side through the left hander at 10. Has to drop it back. That's awkward. Thomas continues the battle through turn 11. Those cars on the tow rope through there, locked together. Feeney and Pye now in. Go, go, go. So this is interesting because the teammates are going to be line astern with Feeney coming out. And here comes Van Gisbergen. And the Van Gisbergen strategy was totally around a short fill and a long middle stint. But clear track was fundamental to that strategy. When he come out and he saw Randall, and Randall's not over here because he's at great pace. So he's going to turn oh. in with him. Oh, they go in, and that will be steering arm damage, I'm pretty sure. I've got steering damage. He just opened the wheel on me. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they don't like that side-to-side -side okay, contact. Check confirmed. Check steering and confirm, please. Waiting for a response there from Thomas Randall. Chris Duckey's his engineer on screen. Here's the replay. So remember, he'd only just stopped. So fresh tyres, has a dive up the outside and then turns in. They make wheel to wheel contact. And the question mark now hanging over the 55 Castrol car. So tries to go around the outside. Very difficult to do up there at turn four. In the process of the contact, Will Davison gets an easy pass done. Here it is again, chopper view. No further action for what happened up there at turn four. Now, here we go. Brock Feeney has managed to slice straight down the middle. Red Bull meeting the sandwich and then a crisscross for Brody out the other side. How cool is this? So this is on the replay. This is all going on while we were focused on the pit stops. And uh, they were only a wafer thin margin apart on the run into turn number one. So oh. how's, how's that? Smith going to the pit lane. This is on board with Brody. Here goes the Red Bull car down the inside, looking for the crisscross. And the problem with being out here that I explained early off the start of the race is the challenge of having to then close down onto the racing line into one. And there was just a little moment where the side draft of the two cars drew them together. And it looks a little bit under, under steery. So when he tried to get into turn nine and Reynolds has got to run, he's dead set got to run here. And he's fired down there. And he's made it stick. Nicely done, David Reynolds. Alistair McVeigh on the radio said, you'll get this done at four. And he did. Here's a pit lane entry. No, he's actually sidestepped deliberately. Was that an issue? Or was that deliberate? And I think that was Gizzy giving way to Brock there. Remember the team championship, Lucker? OK, so Brock a big drink of fuel, and they did that front anti roll bar adjustment. Let's see what it's going on with Shane. Now, they've retightened the wheels. I wonder if he said one of his wheels is loose. All the boys did here was whack the guns back on and give them a tighten. So there's something else that's going on. So they've come in, retentioned the wheels, thinking that that might be it. But he's just going slowly now. In fact, it looked like it may have a gear lever or a gear selection issue because he just plucked two or three gears at the same time then. But he's going very slowly on the entrance to the pit area. And Van Gisbergen is back in the lane. So whatever the issue is with that car, the Triple Eight Race Engineering Group will have another look at that just to see whether there's something more sinister than pick up. In fact, it's in the garage. So tries to stay with him. They're very even through here. But when we saw the chopper shot from above last time, you can see how strong he was under brakes. 
and he has a big dive. So much so that he overcooks it, runs wide. Brody Kostecki drops two spots in that manoeuvre. And Mostert looks strong through here, doesn't he? he does. So uh, I think Heimgarten is just having a bit of a battle pulling that thing up. It just hasn't quite got the tyre grip in a couple of spots, nor does it have the traction. You can see it there. So Chaz now gets it down the inside. He may even get it done before they get to turn eight. Now, there's a right-of-way rule here, much like there is at the Gold Coast, but he's got it done by the time he got to the 150 mark. Oh, yeah. Did he rub it? Did he rub it? That was close. That was close. And Anton's right in here as well. If there was any space on the outside there, I'll be surprised. I think he might have given the fence a rub for sure, Neil. And I think that they're all blowing up on the radio with Andre that he was further along from that point of discretion. The point that you were making is roughly 150 metres before the corner, you've got to be at least level on the inside. And he turns oh. it in. Oh, my God, that was close. Yeah, oh, we've got to get the front to shot to be able to see. Here we go. Look at the slide that he's got going. He's in the marbles. Oh, oh. that was a feeler gauge. <laughs> that was a feeler gauge. Oh, it was about two thou between the left rear and the concrete wall. Whoa. Oh. Adam's like, whew. So here we go. This time through on that control line right there, it is one lap to go. 3,220 metres of racetrack. He's got to get between all the dirt and the grot either side of the racing line and not make a misstep, not lock a brake, not wander off line, not drop his concentration. Turn four and now five executed. No need to over hustle it. He's got 8.9 seconds in hand. It can be a nice, gentle, easy run on this final lap. Turn seven for the, t the last time. Last lap, buddy. Last lap, right. <laughs> and he showed this pace yesterday, didn't he? He did, and that's why I was looking yeah. forward to seeing what he could do today. He was so frustrated to get caught up in all the trouble in yesterday's race. Down to the tricky and critical turn nine now for the last time. <laughs> and out the other side. Stephen Grove can barely contain himself. They're going to wind themselves into a frenzy at Penrite Racing for this one. Gigantic investment for Stephen and Brenton Grove. Millions of dollars on the line to make it all happen. Into the final corner at the end of 78 laps for Penrite Racing. He's 21 years of age. And Matt Payne joins the list of winners in Supercar. came to this event as a supercar rookie. One of three. Feeney in second place, another brilliant Sunday drive here for him. He was the winner last year, and David Reynolds making it one and three for Penrod in his final run for Grove Racing. And there, officially, is our supercar champion of 2023. What a moment. The numbers scream success for Brody. A breakthrough win this year at the AGP. 18 podium visits more than any other driver this season. 10 armour all poles, six race wins. A debut at Bathurst only as far back as 2019 in a very short frame of time. He's become the man to beat. 5,360 kilometres later, Brody Kostecki is officially the Repco Supercars champion. And a great moment also for them at Coca-Cola Racing and at Erebus. <laughs> Don't headbutt each other, please. No. And here he is in front of everybody to celebrate. Massive success this year. that on the fence then. <laughs> I tell you what he nearly did. 
yeah. he very nearly got the trophy. Yeah, he almost knocked it over when he first parked it. And Brody Kostecki in front of all the fans. This amazing atmosphere, this arena. Congratulations, Brody. Coca-Cola Racing and Erebus, well done. But today, our race winner is Matt Payne, home by a whopping eight and a half seconds after a long, hard haul of about an hour and 45 of racing over Brock Feeney, David Reynolds, Cam Waters, Chaz Mostert, and Andre Heimgartner coming home in sixth from Deep Pasquale, Kostecki, who was down the order slightly, didn't have the firepower, as you just said, and then Will Davis and Thomas Randall coming home in our top 10. Last time out for Todd Hazelwood with Blanchard Racing. Last time out for James Courtney at Tickford. Last time out for Scott Pye at Team 18. Last time out for what you're picking up on the theme for Will Brown. So a lot of people on the move and we'll report all of that. We'll bring you a whole lot of new storylines and a lot of energy in 2024. That's to look forward to at the commencement of next year's championship. So points wise, as we wrap it all up this year, at the end of it, home by 323 points in the final analysis for Brody Kostecki over Shane Van Gisberg and had a tough day today as he departs for the US next year. Brock Feeney consolidating and holding on in that third spot. Up one spot came Chaz Mostert and down a spot was Will Brown. Teams championship wise, Erebus got the job done. 176 the margin over Red Bull in the end. So they'll have the primary position in the pit lane for the very first race next year. And then we go live pit lane status for the team placement thereafter for a new experiment in 2024. <laughs> Started all the way back in Newcastle. <laughs> the amphitheater. It's cool, isn't, isn't it? it?